Hello and welcome to our February layout update. You join us once again in the Hornby Magazine uh, workshop and I'm joined of course by Mike as usual um, to look at the progress and the new additions on the layout. That's right, yeah, and we've, we've gone for a slightly different uh, collection of rowing stock this time as well. As it's, it's February, it's always the month of Model Rail Scotland as mm -hmm. well up in Glasgow. Uh, so we've gone with the Scottish theme for the rowing stock we've got running on the layout today. So I think we'll be probably best if we jump straight onto the new double O gauge additions yes. this month. Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Let's go and have a look at what's new. Let's go and have a look. So you join us now amongst the new haul, or the latest haul, I should say, of new additions. That's right, yeah, new double O gauge additions. So, so again, like always, we've got a collection of uh, new ready-to-run samples uh, and obviously items which have also joined the collections of our own as well. So. I mean, quite a nice mix from the manufacturers, really. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we've got Hornby, Dapple, and also we've got a Rainbow Railways repainted class 156 using the real track model as its mm. basis as well. Yeah, so quite a nice collection here. So well, let's start from the, uh, from the front. Uh, we've got the Hornby Packet W4, uh, finished in Port London Authority Blue. Um, it's the latest version of the Packet. I think the first one was released in 2016. Um, great little logos, these lovely detail on them as well. Um, and lovely runners as well. Actually, and very well, collectible. Yeah, definitely very collectible, yeah. <laughs> um, loads of different colours on them as well. So they, they look great in an industrial setting with a bit of different colour. So. Um, next to those, we've got two of Dapple's new parcels uh, streamlined rail cars as well. And uh, actually, interestingly, both of these actually model the same vehicle because there's only ever one of the streamlined rail cars in this condition. Uh, it's number 17 that was finished as this. Uh, so we've got the Great Western one at the front there, which has got the valances around the bogies and is finished in the chocolate and cream colour. Uh, and then behind that, it's in the slightly later version, the BR Crimson livery, uh, which is when it had the balances removed as well. Uh, so two different rail cars, two different periods there as well. So again, they're, they're fitted with 21-pin decoder sockets, got space for a speaker in them as well, nice heavy die-cast chassis, five-pole motor, all the features you'd expect from a, a modern ready-to-run locomotive. So. so next up then we've got uh, the Hornby's latest version of their Class 87 as well. Uh, and this one's quite an interesting one as well, because if you've been to the National Railway Museum lately, you'll maybe have seen 8701. Uh, and it now currently carries two different nameplates on it. So it's named Stevenson on one side, Royal Scott on the other. Uh, it's finished in the British Railway Blue livery that actually finished service with, with Virgin Trains in 2005. Um, so this model is it actually only models a locomotive as it is in preservation. Um, if you want to run it on your layout, well, it's your layout, rule one. Do what you like. So. Rule one always counts. Absolutely, yeah. Well, we're already planning to put this into service on West Coast Cement, uh, which is our West Coast mainline layout. Um, where basically what we're going to do is make sure it has the Stevenson nameplate facing out to the public um, so that it looks like H7001 Stevenson in its final month of service. That's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. So I think so anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next we've got uh, this Rainbow Railways Class 156. Now this has been finished in uh, Northern by a Reva livery. Um, now this is a, I think I'm right in saying it's a custom application of the colour scheme on this unit. Uh, so it's not a factory produced model. This is a handmade, hand finished model. Yes, it's sort of an aftermarket yeah. product. Yeah, so it's a bespoke livery. Um, you couldn't go, to, for example, to real track models and buy this unit in this colour. Um, again, really nicely done. I'll go a bit more looking at that, that in detail in a separate video as well. So. Okay, so next to that, we've got two of Dapple's Class 29s as well. We're very lucky to have, have a two-tone green one and a blue one here today to look at. Um, now, the 29 is the worthy follow-up to the Class 21, which we showed you last month. Uh, so this is after the 21s have been re-engined with a Paxman Ventura engine. Um, so I think it was the mid-60s when they did that. Um, and initially when they came into service they had small yellow warning panels and the two-tone green livery and then later life they went into BR Blue as well. Um, again, great running locos, really nice chassis in these, 21 pin decoder socket, big space for a speaker, I think it's a 58 by 20, 22 mil speaker space. Um, directional lighting, cab lighting, all the things you'd want from a, a ready to run diesel loco. So, and then finishing off the building we've got here for the time being, uh, we've got uh, Hornby's first version of its brand new Princess. Um, Beastie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is really nice, actually. It's a really nicely done model. Um, and arguably, definitely one of the best models of the Princess has been for, for double O gauge. Um, interestingly, as you'll hear in our separate video about the Princess as well, actually, the first ready to run model of the Princess was first made in 1955. Um, and amazingly, I found out today, whilst I was doing some research on these, that actually that basic shell 
um, and former it lasted in production until about until the early 1990s. Blimey. So, um, <laughs> it was then replaced by a, a more accurate version in the early 2000s. Um, but this new version is a, another cut above that. So yeah, really nice product. Um, again, standard features for Hornby locomotive drive mechanism. Uh, it's got a nice five pole motor with a flywheel in there as well. Um, it's got eight pin decoder socket, 28 mil speaker space as well, um, and all the bells and whistles in terms of detail. Including firebox flicker. Yes, actually, yes. Good point. Actually, yeah. This is Hornby's first ready to run steam loco of recent times, certainly, which has got any, a firebox flicker on it as well. I wonder if there's a new trend we're going to see. Well, I, I, become I, the they norm. kind of suggested they might do that as a, as a future thing if, if it's popular with this loco. Personally, I think they should. It's another nice addition to, to what a loco can actually do. Uh, it means when you're taking and going and spending your money in the model shop, you know you're getting something else that does something as well with your loco. So, so yeah, nice addition from Hornby there. I'll say, if nothing else, it takes some very atmospheric um, photos. That's right, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've been putting all those through their paces and like I mentioned a moment ago there'll be separate videos on most of these locos as well coming up on the Hornby Magazine YouTube channel in the next few weeks yeah right let's go on to the O-Gage layout yes I suppose down, yeah. yes. Middleydale Middleydale which you do at West the unnamed yeah. layout the unnamed Middleydale layout yeah <laughs> <laughs> to see what you've been doing since last month yes definitely yeah come right. me yep. so before we go we've had one final addition to Topley Dale yeah, very nice new addition a yeah. very small nice new addition yes. <laughs> And it's obviously it's, it's Stevenson's rocket, the, the, this brilliant little model that's behind us here. Now this is the Triang version. Yeah, that's right. It's the special edition, which is limited to 1500 items. And I'm very proud to say this actually is my own product, which I've bought for my own collection. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm slightly annoyed because I brought one and mine's not arrived yet. <laughs> I beat you to it, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Um, of course, if you miss out on the trying one, you can get a standard one. Yes, that's right. There's a, there's a second version coming as a main catalogue range item as well. Um, I, again, I know they are in short supply with short, some shops as well, so if you do want one with their messages, go and get one quickly. So. And as you can see from the clips we're running, it's absolutely fantastic. The detail's amazing. Yeah, beautiful runner as well. Even DCC ready as well. It's, it's, it, it really is a very nice product. So, a great addition for Hornby Centenary here. Right, on with the show. Absolutely. On to the next bit. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at what's new for the O-Gage side of things as well. Now, there haven't been any new releases into the Hornby Magazine office this month for O-Gage, but I've been working on a few projects of my own, uh, starting to prepare for things that I want to run in the garden this year. Uh, and I've also been doing a bit of scenic work on the layout itself as well, well on our test track as well. Um, first, though, I'm going to talk about the Regional Railways Livery Class 37 we've got here behind me. And uh, I've uh, fitted this one with digital sound now, and it's used Hornby's Twin Track sound and a lens decoder. And this is similar to what we did in the HM149 for the DCC sound feature, where we used a combination of a TTS decoder connected only by its track pickups and a lens decoder to power the motors. Um, but this time I've changed the speaker setup on it as well. So normally we'd have just a, a little 28mm round speaker like this, which comes from the factory with a Hornby Twin Track sound decoder. Uh, but this has now got a um, well, quite an impressive sounding 100 mil by 50 mil twin bass speaker in there. Um, it fills all the space inside the loco uh, to the point where I've actually I've had to modify the uh, exhaust cover here uh, to fit over the top of the speaker. Um, so that sounds brilliant now and we'll show you that running in just a moment. Yes, uh... yeah, so there's another new addition to the O-Gage locomotive fleet and that's a Helgen O-Gage class 33 in Dutch livery. Uh, running in on the O-Gage test track here to get ready to run in the garden railway later this year. I'm hoping to acquire a rake of turbine to go with it as well, so a nice 1990s period correct range. Next on the list, I've literally just over the last 24 hours been working on this new wagon for the, for the layout as well. This is one of the Parkside Models trestle wagons. Uh, I'm finishing it as a BR variant, which means a different type of axle box on it. Um, really nice kit. It comes with a bit of compensation in the axle boxes as well, so you've got a bit of flexibility in the chassis design. Um, the kit's all plastic apart from the buffers and the couplings, basically. Uh, and it's really nice to put together like any other Parkside Models kit is. Uh, so that's in the early stage of construction at the moment. I reckon I should probably have the, the actual physical construction of that finished probably in the next week or so, and then it can move on to being painted. Um, at the other end of the scale, I've got the BR 12 ton pipe wagon here from the same range of kits. That's another Parkside Models one. Uh, and this one I've oh, I built this last year. Um, and I made the mistake of putting it into the train which runs around the garden railway, which meant that it didn't get painted for a long time. Um, but it's now been painted, it's all fully finished, weathered, and ready to go back out in the garden as well. Uh, I say fully finished, I've just noticed whilst I'm talking, I haven't weathered the axle boxes yet, but I can do that later. 
Uh, and then the third new addition on the wagon fruit front is uh, this BR 16 ton mineral wagon, which is the French door type. Uh, now this is another Parkside Models kit. Um, this one at the moment is at the stage where it's got its base colours of paint on it, it's got numbers on it, and it now needs satin varnishing to seal those transfers in, and then it needs all the weathering adding to bring it up to the same standard as the pipe wagon. Okay, so that pretty much completes what we've been doing in terms of rolling stock for the O-Gage. Uh, but you might have already noticed that things have started to move on underneath the rolling stock here as well. Um, so the O-Gage test track's always kind of been a, a bit behind where I really wanted it to be in terms of scenery. Um, when I initially started building this, I kind of saw it moving on a bit quicker and, and getting into the stage of looking like a proper model railway. Uh, but this month I've actually pulled my socks up, got on with it, and actually got on with the ballasting of the track here. Uh, now I've used the same method for the ballasting and the weathering of the track here that I used on our 7mm depot depot layout. So I've used the MIG range of fast set railway colours. Uh, and that gives some really nice dark rust colours to go on the rail sides. Uh, so all the rail sides on this whole area behind me have all been painted by hand. Uh, and then we've, I've used two or three different coats on there of different colours. Uh, and then around that, to ballast it all in, we've used Woodland Scenics uh, blended grey ballasts. I've used a combination of their coarse and their medium grey, which one, when mixed together, they give me quite a nice ballast finish to the layout. Uh, so I've got a few bits to finish off again on that still, uh, and if you come stick with us on the video, we'll show you a bit more detail of how we've actually gone about Okay, so we thought you might like to hear this Class 37 start up with its new decoder and speaker setup in it, uh, so we'll give it a fire up on the old twin track sound. Uh, now, it's got a few features in this which I've, I've set up with the different CVs and the different decoders. Um, so the um, head and tail lights and the roof fan are all powered from the lens decoder, whereas all the sounds are powered from the TTS decoder. So um, in terms of operating this, zero turns on the headlights, which are directional. Um, F10 and F11 control the tail lights independently at each end. Uh, F4 controls the roof fan as well. Um, and then everything else is all sound operated through the TTS decoder. And now in order to accommodate the roof fan and the tail light settings, I've turned the sound volume down on uh, 4, 10 and 11 on the TTS decoder. Uh, so anyway, we'll get to the point and fire it up. Hello and welcome back to the Hornby Magazine Workshop. Today we're starting on the scenery for the O-Gauge test track. Now, the first point of call is to sort out the inner running line here. Uh, this was the first section of track which we laid for the O-Gauge test track. Uh, and it's actually laid with sectional track. It's been giving me a few little troubles with uh, continuity. Um, so we're going to replace that line first underneath the Class O3 here. Uh, and then we can start on painting the rail sides, busting the track, uh, moving forward to making this look like a real railway. First port call, lay the track in position, join it to the new length here. Make sure it's all sitting where we want it to. And then we need to mark it up for cutting. Now that the new track is complete, we can run a test train through and make sure it all runs as we expected. So to paint the rail sides and start the weathering process for the track, we're going to use the MIG Ammo Railway Fast Method paint set. Uh, this comes with uh, six different colour paints inside. Uh, we've got uh, rust tracks, medium rust, old rust, matte black, dust and earth. Uh, we're going to start by using the old rust for the uh, side of the rails. Uh, it's a good colour to start with and then we'll probably put some rust tracks over the top of that as well for second coat. So let's get going.
We've added a third coat of old rust paint to the rail sides on the O-Gaze test track here uh, using the, uh, the paint colours from the railway fast set method by MIG. Uh, now we're going to move on to ballasting the track. So we're using two types of ballast uh, to do this. We've got the wooden scene, it's coarse ballast, grey blend, and the medium ballast, grey blend as well. Uh, there's two different colours of uh, ballast in each of those containers, uh, and the different grades work quite nicely together to give a nice uh, good look to the ballast of the track. Uh, I mix those together about a 50-50 ratio in one of these plastic containers, uh, make sure the two types of ballast are neatly blended together, uh, and then it's time to start applying it to the, to the track bed. Uh, so this takes a bit of time, uh, it's pinch by pinch, adding the ballast into the railway uh, and then we'll brush it all into place. fix the ballast down we've got three main items I've got a water mister with water with a drop of washing up liquid in it I've got a pot with now pre-mixed PVA and water about 50 50 mixture in there and also a drop of washing up liquid as well and then thirdly I've got a 10 milliliter syringe in which to use to transport the glue from the pot into the railway uh, so the first thing you have to do with ballast is you need to wet the ballast first if you don't wet it then when you try and put the glue into it it will just take the ballast with it and end up with a giant mess so you just use the water mister and spray it over the next section of track you want to add the glue to so do this short section here to show you and once you've done that you put some glue into the syringe and then carefully start working your way along where you've added the water drop in glue into the ballast now it'll look wet and messy when you first do this but once this is all dried out, it'll all set nice and hard and have fully finished ballast ready to run the trains through. Again, like the other processes involved in ballasting, this will take a little bit of time. So I'll just do a short step to show you how it works and then we'll continue with the rest of it and show you the finished results. Okay, so now I've added all the diluted PVA over the ballast. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't look its prettiest at the moment. But this is now going to be left alone for about 24 hours for it to fully dry. Uh, and then we'll come back to it. There'll be a few bits of ballast that need sorting out and correcting. Um, I can see, for example, just on the left-hand side here, a bit of filling to do just here. Uh, but that's not a problem. We can do that in a second round. Right, so we've finished doing the ballasting process. So all the ballast is glued down, rail sides are painted, we've cleared all the other items away so we can get on with now, starting to give the, the ballast a bit of weathering as well. Uh, now the first step we want to do is run a vacuum over this. It takes away any loose grains of ballast before we start applying the paint. Uh, so the paints we're gonna use for weathering the track, we're gonna use Geocenics paints. Uh, they're supplied as a black concentrate and a track grime, uh, and they need to be diluted first before used with an airbrush. Uh, I'm not looking for a heavy coat of paint with this, I want really thin paint so we can come back over it multiple times to give build up the effect of the weathering effects. Okay, to fill the colour cup we're going to use a syringe and it gives us more control over the paint. Uh, trying to tip a large vessel into a small colour cup isn't going to go very well. Just add the paint into the colour cup and then we're ready to start airbrushing.
Model Rail Scotland has just been and gone, uh, and to celebrate that annual event, we've been running a Scottish theme on top of the Dale this week. Uh, we've got a collection of rolling stock all dating back to the late 1980s, early 1990s, uh, and that includes uh, Class 47.7s in BR Blue and Scott Rail livery. Uh, we've got a Class 26 in Rail Freight, a couple of 37s in large logo, a 3701 to 374, uh, and we've also got, uh, well, Mark's brought along a, a collection of matching train formations to go with each of those locomotives as well. Um, so really quite a nice collection of stock to have in that layout. But, uh, but anyway, so how was Small Rail Scotland, which is Absolutely fantastic. Very busy, as usual. Lots of people came to see us on the Hornby Magazine stand, which was always, yep. always a nice thing. Yeah, always great to see people at the stand. And I did take a bit of sneaky footage, which I'll roll for you now. Right, so hopefully you enjoyed that footage. I think you'll agree, and it was a fantastic show to go to, some great layouts, and I got a lot of very nice footage, which we may be seeing very shortly in the future. That's right, yeah. So yeah, a few bits of housekeeping then to round Ooh. off this video. Uh, first, a date for your diary. March the 5th is when the April issue of Formula Magazine goes on sale. That's issue 154, and you can see the cover here. You did it to me. <laughs> is where you can see us next. So we're going to be at the Basing Stoke Model Rail Exhibition on March the 14th and 15th. Uh, and they're going to be exhibiting West Coast Cement. So that's our 1995 to 2005 West Coast Main Line layout. Um, so modern image. Yeah, modern image. Lots of great trains, new stock to show on there as well. And uh, a little tip for our next layout update video. We're going to make a, a special trip to West Coast Cement as well to give you a bit more of an in-depth background to that layout as well. Uh, and some of the new stock that's running on it as well. So join Sounds us like that fun. One.
Uh, other than that, it's time to say goodbye for this one. It Thank is. you for watching. Um, don't forget to click like and subscribe, and uh, we'll join you in the next one. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.